welcome. This is the Village of Bloomingdale's Water Reclamation Facility. We're going to take you on a little tour throughout the treatment plant and show you our process. We operate on a SCADA system where we have computer control both in-house at several locations throughout the facility and we also work off of tablets and the operators can access the computer and any alarms that go on during the night are on the weekends and take control of that. We can maneuver around through the SCADA system and see where everything is located and how it is operating. We've been operating in this facility since 2008. That was phase one and it was completed in 2010. Okay, so we're gonna move on over to the lab. Sam Ferrero is our lab facility coordinator. He's in charge of the laboratory and all the operational duties correlating his results from the lab and how the plant should run. Um, hi Sam. Want to tell them what you're doing? It's about it. Uh, setting up BODs. Set them up five days later. We incubate them five days later. We read them. Gives us a good idea of the strength of the waste water. Our facility uh, averages three million gallons per day. Uh, we do IEPA testing. Uh, it's called NPDES testing, and we send in a DMR to the environmental EPA to tell them where our parameters are, okay? As we walk through the facility, most of our buildings have letters correlating on them saying A through uh, X, Y, and Z. And that was put on there for the fire department for emergency calls. So if we call from building E, the phone number automatically shows the fire department that our emergency is in that building versus telling them that they're in the influence building, which they have no idea where it's at. So it's correlated right on the caller ID is to tell them where we're going. Um, this is a screening building. It removes the majority of the inorganic materials, the rags, the dirt, the twigs, things that get into the sewer system. We have dumpsters that are picked up and taken to the landfill on a weekly basis. This was part of um, our last expansion, which was phase 2A to help improves the removal of uh, inorganic material and matter from the system, just to help it run a little more efficiently. Our pumps are all underground. We have five dry water flow pumps located underneath the ground here, and an excess flow system for anything over 8.25, 8.425. So our pumps are maintained underground, and the unit that's running over here to the side is for odor control. We try to be very friendly with regards to our neighbors, which are right across from these trees. And uh, that pulls all the odors out of the raw sewage coming in underground from these pumps in the screening building. This is just to give you an idea of the size of the dry weather flow pumps that we run. We have five of these. This is our spare. Uh, it kind of helps us with our maintenance department to have at least one spare of each item that we have to operate the facility. We chose this pump because we thought it would give us the best pumping capabilities for the kind of debris that comes into our, our plant. We have a huge rag issue like everybody else. We have to make sure that people understand not to put anything down their drains or toilets or anything else that will clog the system. The more they put in, the more we have to take out. So we picked this so because we thought that that would do the pump, pumping capabilities that we need, and it's done a good job. It was installed in 2012, and they've been fantastic. I'd like you, I'd like you to introduce you to uh, my lead mechanic, Juan. He gets, to drive, he gets to drive around in this little gator. It, we have had this unit for a long time. It really helps our maintenance staff move around all the acres that we have here. As you can see, throwing a ladder, throwing a pump, it really takes away having the man have to carry things. What do you think? You like it? I need a CD player. You want a CD player? <laughs> Tint the windows. Tint the windows. I can say what I want now. air conditioning too? For oh, sure, okay. might as well. So, but we have three mechanics that work here. Um, needless to say, we have a 
preventive maintenance program where our oil changes are done and the equipment is checked on a regular basis. So we probably average around how many work orders in a week? A week. Uh, between 200 work orders, 2 to 250. Okay. PMs, inspections, oil change, greases, electrical, visual. That's pretty much handles it. Thank you. Thank back, you. Back to work. Yes, yes. Okay, these are our excess flow facilities. We have what's called a first flush system. This is to take on that, really that first batch of uh, raw sewage that comes in when you have high flows. Uh, we can take this and then take the solids and direct them right to the digesters, which helps on our process so it's not hydraulically overloaded. This is the first flush system. And to the other side is our excess flow clarifiers, which gives it another set to settle. And then as the event slows down, we can reprocess it back to the head of the plant. So they have nice big swimming pools when they're clean water, but they're never clean water. It's mostly raw sewage. Actuators here. We have 41 of these actuators at the facility. Um, they've been really good for us in terms of being able to open and close the, the valves, especially during excess flow events, which are usually an emergency situation for us. These can be ran off of our uh, SCADA system. They're all linked together so that they can be set to open and close depending on the levels that are in the tank. Also, when uh, Juan was telling you about work orders and maintenance, the guys, when they come up, they can automatically come up and just exercise them by turning them electronically on and off or manually. Uh, when they're exercising them, prior, prior to this, this is a little one, but you can see this one back here, how much power it is. When a uh, maintenance mechanic has 41 of these and they have to exercise them, not that they just don't love that job, but it makes it a lot easier. Maybe it might take two or three minutes versus 10 to 15 minutes, and when you multiply that out, it becomes a work issue. So these have been really good for us. We can turn them on and off again, like I said, with our computers from home. If something needs to be opened automatically, we can do that, where otherwise somebody would have to come in in the middle of the night to do it, okay? We have in-house maintenance on all of our equipment. Um, as Juan said, we work on a work order system which gives them either weekly, quarterly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, and we can even project things out like two years in advance so that if we have to have oil changes, they're directed into knowing that when, when it needs to be done and who's required to do it, whether it's a two-man job or a three-man job, what um, safety precautions they have to have. Like these tanks are combined space tanks. So then when staff has to go in it, they have to find out what uh, permitting they need to do, use their gas protectors on them and enter the tank. Um, they go in there, they might grease or exercise the flights. Or over here we have flushing gates that are used to clean the tank. We have to make sure that the seals are taken care of. That's all done in the in-house maintenance. We do subcontract out um, some of our work with uh, specialized equipment because we don't have the big high end, we don't have the cranes, we don't have that here at our facility, and that we ask for extra help from outside subcontractors. Just so you're aware that the byproduct of most wastewater treatment plants is biosolids. Um, we remove about 45 cubic yards of solids uh, per week. We have two Carmine Sanderson presses that were installed in phase one of 2008-2009 and uh, they have decreased our uh, biosolids cost by about a hundred thousand dollars so they have really paid for themselves in the long run. We still haul our biosolids to farm fields. Um, it's land applied and injected into the ground for um, farmers. So that's hauled out at least two or three times uh, a week. We also thicken our sludge um, when days that we're not pressing.
have a garage and a shop. And of course the garage houses our equipment, uh, the gator. We have a small Kubota backhoe that we use for projects within the facility. The skylight jack here we use quite often when we're changing light bulbs or doing maintenance on any kinds of conveyors and trans things up in the ceiling. It really makes things a lot safer for the guys when they're changing things up. I've mentioned to you before that we've gone under many construction sites since 1979 when I started that um, buildings become refurbished and reused for other things. This is where our sludge press equipment used to be housed. It used to be sitting right here on the floor. It was already a building that had garages and heat and water and we thought it would make a great facility for storing our equipment and being able to work on our small engines and pumps when uh, they needed some uh, uh, maintenance in the shop. So a good reuse of the thing of a building not having to be torn down. Yeah, they were thrilled to death. Christmas tree. 
will be very sad when we go through construction and, and we lose the trees that we've planted for a long time. We have lots of lilacs. We have all kinds of flowering bushes throughout the facility. It looks really nice in the spring when everything's blooming and it smells good. Everybody wants a tree <laughs> plant to smell good, right? Spider-Man, Batman, and Superman on the walls. We have one of our seasonals give our guys all their superhero status. And it's nice for the tourists to let the kids know when their Cub Scouts are coming through that you can be a wastewater hero too and make it a safer place for the environment. That's sort of just my fun way of saying that we, we take our job serious, but we also try to have fun with it. <laughs> so this is where they hang out. As you can see, we have multiple equipment. We have to keep with one hand. Not everything is available to us at our fingertips. The internet has made things easier for us to obtain. Overnight shipping has made things wonderful. We don't keep as many expensive items on the shelf as we did, say, 25 years ago. So, but everything that they use from PVC to electrical fittings is at the maintenance staff and operator's hand of the shop. A combination of sand and charcoal. The effluent that comes off the clarifiers runs through the six filters before it's chlorinated and then dechlorinated going to the East Branch of the Two Page River. We have a staff of eight, including myself and our facility coordinator. We have three operators and three mechanics. They all intermingle in terms of their jobs. The mechanics help out the operators. The operators help out the, me the mechanics in getting the tasks done. As you just saw in the filter building, we try to keep everything clean. Keep it clean, keep it moving, make sure that there's not debris on the floor, that the chains are up and things are taken care of so that it's a safe environment. construction is planned. We have a facility planning um, project that goes to the year 2022 and it's phase one and phase two were approved by the EPA. So far we've completed phase one and phase 2A which consisted of dry weather flow uh, upgrades and uh, sludge press as you saw that new equipment and odor controls and a variety of other things. Phase 2B will only be pushed forward as the flows in Bloomingdale increase. Right now it's on hold and when the flows increase it may be moved forward possibly the year 2018 and 19. The other two phases 3 and 4 will be incorporated into the planning as time is needed or things change. 
A lot of things with Bloomingdale's, everybody else, as our permit requirements change, your facility planning amendment has to be modified, and we keep up on that. Most of the loans that help pay for all this construction, usually everyone wants to know, we use the low interest loans or funding through state and government funding and project what it's going to cost in the future for the residents of Bloomingdale. Hopefully our finance makes sure it works all out and keeps everything as close to the table as possible for the costs. So I hope that gives you an understanding of the Village of Bloomingdale's Water Reclamation Facility. And if you're ever in the area, stop by and visit me.